And we're off to the start of the 1987 Ferriby 10 and immediately I'll hand you over to Kevin Tolchard who's the uh, commentator for today's event. Thanks Pete. As you can see the weather is as per usual for the Ferriby 10. We've got a rather cold day today, a lot of runners wearing tights I believe. Um, at the front at the moment we have Jim Dingwall just out of shot. Is that a monitor there? You can see what's yeah. on there. You need to look at the monitor. So here we have it. Jim Dingwall in the lead already. It's supposed to be in quite good form at the moment. And just behind him we have number 411. Duncan McFarland. It was Duncan McFarland. Scunthorpe. From Scunthorpe Harriers. Wearing a luminous vest. George Baker took down the inside there, Andy Ulrich following just behind as well. City of Harlow winning the team race at the moment. But the race is only one and a half minutes old. I think that's a bit early to judge the team race yet, Pete. I think Sheffield, I believe, got quite a strong contingent out today. Yes, the leading runner there is uh, Vestra and Malcolm Martin. One of the country's leading veterans. I believe Carl Nightingale also has entered today. Yeah, I haven't seen him yet. I haven't though. seen him, but he's entered. surface today, Peter, looks, looks quite good for running on. But at least it's got no snow on it. Good. Temperature at the moment is north degrees centigrade. And there's a chill easterly and the occasional snow flurry. And the race now is just over half a mile old and we still have uh, Jim Dingwall leading that group. He's pressing on and he's obviously stating his intent and he's looking quite good. What do I say you, Kev? He looks quite good. He's, um, he's stamped his authority in the race from the start, I think. After last year when Dave Wilkinson pulled away from him. Last year when Dave Wilkinson pulled away from him halfway, I think he's he's trying to work a bit harder at the start of this race. Um, I like the way George is sitting on his show. I don't know, is George fit at the moment, please? Very, very fit. So it could be a... a Possible challenge from George today, do you think? Yes, this could be the day when George wins a really big one. Yeah. Uh, we haven't seen Dave Wilkinson yet, have we? Uh, we yeah. haven't. He's supposed to be coming, Peter, I believe. But well, uh, I didn't see him before the race, haven't seen him in the race yet. The, there's no sign of him there. This could be Jim's race. Steve Rennie's in that second group there. He seems to be struggling now a bit. Already, yes. yes, that's right. And there's Mark Smith as well going through. Stu Shard crosses off the pace as well after five minutes. Yes, well, it's rather, if you're not warmed up, you've got quite a problem there, haven't you, really? That could be a problem today as well, because I, I know some of the lads are just running around the school grounds yeah. trying to warm up. A lot of Grimsby lads, were, they were blue and white hoops in that next group. I think all the teams seem to be sticking together for, for extra heat, Pete, do you think? Could be. <laughs> It's Pete Jarvis here. Uh, this is the, one of his two very serious races this winter. The other one's going to be the London Marathon. Oh, and Fowley just gone through there. Yeah. Less said about Alan the better, I think. Rob Robbie just gone through. Oh, we missed Rob Robinson there. He's a bit off the pace today. If he's going to get his 56 or 55 minute, he's got a bit of work to do. It should be quite fast times today, though, Kevin. I think, you know, it's... Well, that uh, lead group seems to be pushing quite hard, Pete, so... Yeah. Uh, what's the course record for this course, Pete? Uh, well, it's a new course, really, and it's only the second time it's been run, I think. It? But it's, it's supposed to be quite a hard course, from what, from what, I've, from what I've been told. I've not actually ran this distance before, but I've um, been informed by reliable sources. It's quite a difficult course with yeah. a, a strong sort of uphill section to start with, followed by downhill. Yeah, that, that's that still right? the same. Yes. Essentially, it's the same. The only change is that you finish at the school, but it's still this 10, 10 miles, 168 yards. 
or thereabouts. Can we take 100 yards? Yeah. But you're quite right, you've got a four to five miles and three of those miles are uphill. The, the highest point of the course is about 300 feet above sea level. Which is quite high for all. We have the usual repartee from the uh, all of lads. Who's got to be said they're just out for a run. Because there's no chance of winning or winning any prizes. Definitely the run for fun brigade now, would you say, Kevin? Well, you could say that, Pip, but I wouldn't say it's much fun running today. It's a bit cold out there. Mm. I think I prefer running in the sunshine myself. Yeah. So, uh, there's uh, McFarlane there from um, from Scunthorpe, who's now taking it up. He's a leading junior runner. Is that lead Dave McFarlane? Uh, sorry, Dave McFarlane, yes. yes. Uh, he's an up-and-coming runner, so he could prove quite a threat. Uh, he has run under 50 minutes for 10 miles. And of that group there, I would say he's the leading contender to Jim. Or that... I know Dave's got a bit of a sprint, or at least he used to, because I used to race him from 1,500 metres. Yes. He's about the same age as me. And I used to be standing most of the times, but he's, he's got quite a fast finish, as far as I can recall. In fact, he won the Gator Road Race about five, well, about four years ago when I ran it, um, in the junior section. So he, he, he's got quite a good um, so background what, behind him. What age would that make him, Kevin? He's about 21, I think. 21. I think he's younger than me, he's about 21, please. Yes. So it's age against experience here. Jim's yeah. got the experience, and um, yeah. my father's a lot younger, but is he stronger? George uh, Baker's worth talking about. He's not took the lead, he very often does. Pushes on and blows himself out. He's he's taken a rest right on um, Duncan or Dave McFarland's shoulder there, and he seems to be doing it quite right. Paul Clark has tucked it quite ni nicely in. I don't know much about his present form, but I know he's he's run sub 50 for 10 as well. And just behind him is uh, the ever consistent John Barker, also of Grimsby. But they seem. Those two runners seem to just be struggling a little now. Yeah, I think we're going to see a, a breakaway group of three quite soon. We're going to see my following, um, Jim Dingwell and George Baker pulling away from the, yeah. the groups runners, I think. This hill is sort of the screw bow. You see Andy Ulrich has dropped off, Mike Lake has dropped off, and as I say, the other two or three runners are struggling at the back now. And it's definitely, uh, McFarlane is definitely calling the shots. George is taking his spectacles off there. Means it must mean he means business, I think. And so the leading group is now down to three, the big three. That's uh, George Baker, Duncan McFarlane, and Jim Dingwall. These could well fill the first three places, but who's going to win? We have to. We'll have to wait to see. But the field, it's not as classy as last year. There's no Carl Nightingale, who we expected to be up there. There's no Dave Wilkinson, but I think we've got quite a race on between those front three. Martin's passed um, Andy in the last half a mile. I think Andy must be still after that quite fast start period. Yes, quite right. Yes, deserves Steve to. Rennie, <laughs> Steve Rennie in the shot now. Going too fast, blowing up. Yeah. And Mark Smith there, falling behind. City of Hill, City of Hill packing quite well with Stuart Sharkross there. Dave Jarvis now, he's, um, he did 54 minutes in the Tipton 10 recently. So he's running on par for his sort of 10 mile time, although potentially he's a much faster 10 miler than that. Quite a, long, quite a long gap for the next one. <laughs> yes. You can see the expression on the faces. I think it's the cold air, you know, it gets right on the lungs and it's quite painful. It's quite a burning sensation in the lungs once the air is so cold. Grimsby, I think, people looking good for second team prize here. Yes. I think City of Hull got wrapped up almost. At the yeah, there. Trevor Shields there, he's tall Harriers. Um, yeah. It looks 
it looks pretty good. I don't think Sheffield, uh, a lot of Sheffield runners haven't bothered coming with the weather. Uh, there is one man here, and I think he's worth just staying on for a minute. He's got a red vest on, blue top, and it looks like Peter Allotson. Yes, it is, Peter Allotson. Surprise return. Alan and Alan Fowley, number 84. Yes, yes. His Keeping his brains warm. Problems to go through, get away from the crowd. One now. Yeah. Veteran Colin Martin, the uh, video film cameraman, showing his skill in capturing the agony and ecstasy of this great event. I don't know so much about ecstasy, Pete, but there'll be a lot, a lot of agony out there at the moment. I mean, 10 miles are hard enough from the start with. That's uh, Brian Jones just coming into video shots. Um, Rob Robinson there. Rob Robinson. Alan Fowley once Fowley. again, he's hogging this screen. Pete Jarvis says running very well. He's having an excellent run. I think it's some of those new shoes he's wearing, Pete. Yeah, it could be. It must be. Of course he's a good rest there, isn't he? Yeah. Got all sorts of pointers to form here. Allison again, running around near uh, Sh Shane Page. I don't suppose Shane Page would have ever expected to be ahead of Peter Allison. He's not very fit at the moment, obviously, Pete. Is there any particular reason for that, do you know? Yeah, he's, uh, he's running a business. <laughs> oh, I see. Seems to be an occupational hazard. <laughs> oh, Almost the bad start of your family, I believe. We'll not tell you, but some dramatic things have happened. We'll tell you as as the story unfolds. But that's Peter Moon there leading that group. Peter Moon, who's now captain of East Hull Harriers, um, formerly of Hull Spuns and formerly of East Hull Harriers before that, where in the uh, late 60s he was a three three times cross country champion. So Mike Lake there is in pitch. He's having a good study period. He, he was the second counter for City of Hull in the Northern uh, Championships. Second to uh, 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 Steve Rennie, who's an excellent cross-country runner. So Mike, having come out of the Army, he's had a year or so, he's got himself, his act together, and he's running quite well. And so we're on, and these three runners here, two from Grinsey Harriers, they're fourth, fifth, and sixth in the race. Uh, Paul Clark, um, and also Malcolm Martin. From Sheffield Malcolm Martin. Martin. It's, the, it's the chasing group, chasing the three. And John leaders. Barker, of course. We're very close to those runners. <laughs> Top international athlete. There he is, Jim Marathon Dingle. runner. Jim is suffering. He said he thought. It would have been a wise move not to run today. I'm sure he's heartily in agreement with that now. This is a tough race if you're not 100% fit. Here we have in second place George Baker, who's now got about 100 yards on Jim Dingwall. 
As we said earlier, Jim is, um, sorry, George is in quite good shape at the moment. He's left Jim for dead. Jim's struggling. In fact, Jim has, has been caught up by the, the chasing group of three runners, I believe. But George is running quite strong at the moment. That leading group of three, which we thought would stay together, has actually split up. Yeah, it's George's. He's a good runner, he's got plenty of stamina. If he could believe in himself, he could possibly get to the leader, Duncan McFarlane. He's about 80 yards down. It looks an awfully long way when you're running flat out anyway. I think it's very hard to close that gap once it opens, Pete, because although you're running at very much the same speed as the guy in front, that there's that buffer zone between the two of you, which is always very, very difficult to close. Unless, of course, the guy in front blows up completely. He's done. Well, Mac Farman is just coming in the shot, and he's showing no signs of that. He's, he's certainly springing, the, springing along there. Here we have Duncan McFarlane again after that rather treacherous corner. He's looking like all runners when they're running well. He doesn't look any strain at all. He just looks like he's jogging, doesn't he? He's running a lot faster than everybody else, and yet he looks easier than everybody else. That's a sign of a class runner. A runner you used to run against, Kevin? Many years ago, please. So we're coming along Kemp Road here. Um, one of the posher parts of uh, Swanland, or of the whole area, probably. And uh, we've got some, some class runners coming through. That's right. It's quite an undulated part of the course as well, isn't it, Pete? You've got uphills, you've got slight downhills, and a few bits in the flat, which is strange for Hope, in my experience over the last couple of years. And here's one of the Kemp Road residents on the left-hand side with a brown jacket on, just making a comment is that, that is none shot? other than Brian Cook, former district marathon record holder. Two hours, 22.13. And also the owner of Windsor House. And so, Duncan McFarlane, he seems to be extending his lead. He's running exceptionally easily. It's down a slope now, so if you're running well, it's very difficult to close the gap. Well, I'm saying that, I think, George, the gap hasn't opened very much. We thought it had opened earlier on, but I think it's very much the same. It's about, what, 100 yards or so? Between well, George we're, and we're just timing this and just yeah, give you an forward. idea what the gap is. Um, it's a bit more than you think, you know. It's about 15 seconds. 15 seconds, so it's less than 100 metres. Yeah. And Jim now, he's um, he's certainly held his position. He doesn't seem to be under threat like he was just before from that group behind. So Jim's running a bit better now. <coughs> that smooth economic style. And you, you can... And the next group, there's Malcolm Martin there, sitting around. He's looking quite easy. Mike Blake oh, there, close up quite yeah, a bit on those three Mike Blake, he might get amongst them yet, think, you know. I think he will, he's looking very strong. Yes. Yeah. And the next two uh, runners here. Uh, it is Peter Moon's having a good run. Peter Moon is having a good run. He's, uh, in, in the distance, we can also see Martin Farrell. We you must be disappointed with this. I think Martin's better on the shorter distances, Pete. Hey. Well, he, he does I, he does like to think he's a 10 miler as well. We've seen him perform better over, over five miles since the West Park race as well, haven't we? Yeah. And they got him five. He could certainly do with one of those massive kicks that he put in there. Yeah. To close the gap or two up. I think he'll need, need a couple of those massive kicks at the moment where he's such Mike Lake's definitely closing on that on that group of three who are chasing the leaders. Yes, and Mike's got quite a quite a finish, so he may well have quite a, a say in that if he could just get on to them. But Paul Clark there of Grimsby, he's 
the in and out of running and he looks like he's got himself very fit again. He's one of these runners who can get themselves fit very quickly. Here we have Jim, he's pulled away again from that group, he's got a bigger gap on them. It's a matter now of can he catch George Baker? Well he's after George, there's no doubt about that. You can see by the uh, set look on his face. There's one way to maintain your position and that is to go for the next one. And keep your eye on the guy in front, just closing on him as much as you can. Slight uphill here which is going to hurt the runners a little bit, especially trying to catch the guy in front, which Jim's trying to do with George now. Just the Georgian pitcher now. George is still looking quite strong. Fairly easy as well, Pete. Yes. The trouble is you can you can't run any faster than you're fastest, can you? And the gap is beginning to look impossible. You can see they they're almost equal distance between the first three. Six minutes into the race, Pete, so we've got, what, another 14, 15 minutes left? That's right. And I can only see the first three positions widening. As you can see. Without the, uh, the help of the stewards here, must be frozen to the marrow, these events wouldn't take place with such slick organisation. And of course, I must have police as well, Pete, who close off all the roads, or as best they can anywhere, yes. control the traffic. I mean, this looks like the surface of the moon or something here, doesn't it? These heaps of snow all over the place. Well, was it, there was certainly, there's been a lot of phone calls um, to runner care all this week, asking if this race would take place. As you can see by the look of the snow on the side of the roads, there's no wonder we got those inquiries. But we have been lucky, the snow has held off, although there seems to be a lot in the air. And there's only, as Kevin said, only a few minutes left of this race, possibly another two to two and a half miles or less. Need all three runners there in a real long sort of train. see just about if Fred moves over <laughs> all three runners in shot there and you can see the kind of gaps there's no there's no way this those positions can change by some sort of accident uh, you note that uh, George is running on the right hand side of the road he could actually be disqualified for that because road runners should always run on the left and if you run on the right is uh, deviating the course. That's right. And runners have been uh, disqualified for this. But if he gets disqualified, I think everybody else behind us will be disqualified as well, because they're all running the right-hand side of the yeah, road as well. Yeah, that's correct. Well, Which the, means we have one finisher. It'll be Duncan McFarlane. Well, the winner, he's playing it by the book. And I don't blame him. Yeah. So we're, we're on 43 minutes, and we're just waiting for the leader, who, of course, is Duncan McFarlane. Uh, one of the youngest winners for some years. In fact, I think we have to go back to Malcolm Ma Mountford for a younger uh, winner of this race. I think he won in 1977 or so. Went on to be a uh, prolific marathon runner. Prolific, but never as good as he might have been, I, th I think. Next, you can see George uh, Baker there. He's, he's held on pretty well. It, certainly Duncan hasn't got away, but... Uh, there's no way George can close that gap either. And George knows that, but at least he's getting second place and a very well earned second place. Jim comes around now. He's uh, he's clear in third place. He's wise and old enough to know that he can't do anything about this either. 
uh, group yeah, and, and Mike Lake has got with that group, so this could be very interesting. The group's easy to work with and by yourself, so we've got a good chance of catching Jim. And uh, after this point, you fell. Yeah. 16 seconds, uh, Jim was behind George there, so uh, that's not plausible. It makes something determined at the front pit, I think. Yes, that could. So off, we must now go to the finish, but there's a, there's a very interesting battle going on there for the lower positions. And so the uh, the finish of the 1987 Ferrari 10. There's an outright and clear winner, Duncan McFarlane of Scunthorpe Harriers, and he's setting a course record for this uh, new course. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is. He's running 50, 26, 27. Yeah, if you push that, please. No, well, it's, uh, as it's 50, 30 now, it'd be difficult. Was it? Yeah. Oh, well, my watch is up. Uh, my watch is... Uh, and they finish there, 50, 35 for the winner. 50, 35, I make it. I'll make it. My watch is stopped. Yeah, go on. You're right, Pete. Yeah, my watch is stopped. And uh, second place, excellent run by uh, George Baker. I think this is the third running of this particular course in 50 minutes and 58 seconds. He's checking his watch. And these runners are going to suffer for this. Jim has held on. He's taken... He's a second count of the city of Hull. Third position overall. Second last year, third this year. He's looking around. He's in no danger, though. Just checking on the opposition. For a man who's not fit, 51-25 is not bad. And Paul Clark there is coming. He made fourth. Paul Clark, excellent run by Paul. 51-33. And John Barker's had a great run. 51-36. And Mike Lake for his brave run in there. 51-42. Malcolm Martin's coming next. The veteran obviously won that. 51-49. Some vet. Yes, we thought Mike might take that group there, Pete, but I think he got thrown out on the finish at there. I'm Good run by Peter Moon here. Peter Moon is running 52 minutes and 4 seconds. Next run, I'm not quite sure, 354. 354, followed by 342. Two out of town runners there. 354. Two. Michael Hill and T. White from Long Longwood Harriers. Yeah, and the next runner now, 52 and 34 seconds, 2.56. Grimsby runner, so Grimsby have closed the team in, but City of Hull have got it. That's Paul Freeman coming in there for Grimsby. Yeah. And uh, here we go with uh, Martin Farrell. Martin Farrell. Holding off Andy there. Yeah, well, not a bad run. It's 52, yeah. 54, and Andy, this is a good run for Andy. 52, 59, I hope he gets it. Sounds so much better than 53 minutes. And looks like another Grimsby runner there, 43. Grimsby have done very well today. It's Rob Eccles there from Bingley Harriers, actually, please. Oh, well, <laughs> sorry about that. Same vest. So, um, oh dear. Mark, Mark Smith, Smith all over the place there. Yes, yes, he's... Uh, he's, he's foaming at the mouth. Yeah. Has he got rabies? <laughs> well, Mark's all right. And there's a Selby runner there, big lad there, 418. He's run well. New runner, not seen him before. Steve Runny now, 53, 37, 38. Had a lot of injury problems, so he should be pleased with this. Sub runner, if it was Ian Muir, number 418. Yes, new runner to look out for. Here we have some more City of Hull runners here. Brian Ward there, better known as an orienteer, but he likes road running. Oh, by Stuart Shaw, what's it Stuart now? Stuart Shaw crosses in that next group there. Yeah. They're running 53, 55 or thereabouts. We're just past the 54, mark, 54 minute mark now, and um, we start to have to talk about the thing where you only get on the video if you run certain paces. I've had it suggested to me that um, if we see Alan Farley on the picture, then he'll definitely been here too long. 
Yes, that's, that's probably true, Pete. I think we can't wait here for two hours for Alan Fowley, can we? No, no, not really, no, no. no. We haven't enough tape for a start. I mean, we know he'd like us to be his ego, but there, there are limits to what we can achieve. There's an East Hole Harry over here. He, he's, I think he's the first East Hole Harry I've seen, actually. It's one of the first ones I've seen. Uh, 198. Number 198. That's Bruce, Bruce McDermott. Bruce McDermott, McDermott. yes. Yeah. New runner on the scene. He ran just inside 55 minutes, which is, is no mean feat on a course like this. This sort of way, anything in the 60 minutes is quite good for you, I think. Yeah. Dave Jarvis here. He'll be disappointed with this, probably. He's run 55-15, certainly potentially much faster. Number 360 finishes there, another out of town runner. That's Al Steams from Not Say so Pennystone Footpath Runners, please. Thank you, Two runners finishing here. Well, a lot of runners have come a long way for this race. This is the East Hall Vestia Yeah, that's yeah, Trevor Shields, number 211. 55-45. And John Matthews now, number 99, City of Hull, 55-55. And a great run here is uh, Peter Ellison. He's come through very, very strongly. Former winner of this race. Former international athlete, 56-11. That's an excellent run. Give him a month's training and he'd be down to take four minutes off that. And so we're getting 56.30 now. We get more and more City of Hull vests coming through. You know, it's getting more and more people a bit better dressed down the field. I can't say I blame them. That's right. Jeff Clarkson, number 163 there, of East Hull Harriers. So, East Hull have had quite a few runners out, but nothing to challenge for the team title, which is firmly in City of Hull's hands. And we think Goose be second team, Fish. Yes, I think there's no doubt about that. The third team, I'm not really sure who the third team is. It could be any. Uh, so Rob Robinson is coming through there. Yeah, Rob Robinson, 57-20. Well, ah, Phil Dubry. Phil Phil Dubry's on screen. He's walking across Something the Something could happen now. He's lost his number. He's got in the way. He's, certainly He's getting some hustle. Yes. I thought they were ski glasses he had on there. And we're now, uh, uh, Pete Jarvis has run excellent, 57.46, uh, tremendous run there. You'd be happy with that time, Pete? Oh, well, uh, over the moon, I would yeah. say. He's not so far behind David, is he? No. He's given David about 30 years. Have we seen Shane Page come through yet? No. no. Number 340. He's finishing very well dressed for the occasion. Ian Mitchell from Longwood Harriers. And there's some, uh, these are Scarborough Runner 404. And now it's getting too difficult to, unless you're Raymond Glendenning and have a head full of. Uh, Stuart Backhouse from Scarborough went through there. Backs. But uh, we do see Brian Jones finishing there now, number 189. And you can see it's quite a big field, and we're now at still 58 51. We've, I think we've decided it's 60 minutes. 60 minutes, Pete. Uh, do you, you think we'll have time to see the First Lady come through? Well, we, are, we will have to wait on for the First Lady, having said that. Uh, yeah, I think we should, Pete. Yes. We haven't seen many ladies to the fort. Derek know, Pickering back in. In, in motion. He's had a lot, a lot of problems. 59-13. You shouldn't be unhappy with that. And 
Yes, it is. I it's Alan Fowley. No, we're going to cut off now, please. Or well, should we let Alan Fowley come through? He's coming through. He's walking across the line. He yes. can't run all the way. He the could. tape's run out. We've yeah. had to put three new tapes in, but we've got him. Only just. We've fallen all the way through. Let's let's watch him fall over first, Pete. No. No. We can't overdo it. Yeah, mate. I see what she says, yeah. And so now, the only remaining question is the first lady to finish. Some would argue the first thing's already finished, please. Yeah. Alan Fowler just gone through, didn't he? Uh, well, yes, I'll not get involved in that one. I won't get involved in that one either. Just a vicious show when I heard, please. <laughs> Here comes the first lady, then. No, 58. And it looks no. like the winner of the woman's, no, the second place of the woman's arms is just 60 minutes and 7 seconds, because she's definitely won that former 800 metres specialist. Um, Kath Finch, Kath Finch from one of the Grimsby Harriers. Yeah, that's right. So the ladies' the prize has been wrapped up. Is there a second lady anywhere near? Was it close race? We missed most of the people on the way around. So, Kevin, um, I'd like you to just possibly wrap this up. Yes, quite a good day's uh, race at the front of the... The front of the field. Well, like you said, I feel sorry for the guys further down the field. They've been out there a lot longer than the likes of Jim and uh, Duncan and George, who obviously wrapped up better, I think. They've got the, the thermal tops on today, which I think they need is. Uh, the road service hasn't been too bad compared to previous years. So at this point, I think we'll we leave the race. With a few little thank yous, I think. Thank you to um, Colin, Colin Martin, uh, our film cameraman. Um, thank you for our guest commentator here, Kevin Colchard. And last but by no means least, thanks to our intrepid driver, Philip Badger. Philip Badger drove better than James Hunt today, I thought, Chris. Yes. I thought he thought he was James Hunt. At some points I thought it was going to be James Hunt. James Hunt's crashed a few times in the pit. And with that note, we say goodbye.